So the next thing we're going to do is talk about creating some vector data inside the geodatabase. So we're going to go through creating the data and then we're going to go through actually editing some as well. So the first thing before we can actually start to create some data in ArcMap we actually have to create the file that's going to hold the data. And again we're inside the geodatabase now. So I can simply right click and go to new and this time we're going to be creating a feature class which is pretty much the same as creating a shapefile in the older versions um, but there's various things that, that, that various benefits to creating it inside the um, inside the geodatabase so the first thing we do is give it a name um, now we're going to be creating some parcels of land for a phase one habitat so I'm just going to simply call it phase one. Um, the actual feature class name is not allowed to have any spaces so you need to use underscores um, but the alias can be more friendly so I'm going to call it phase one habitat survey and again the second box here we can choose the kind of feature that we're going to create. We know we're going to be digitalizing some field boundaries, some field shapes, um, so we'll leave it as a polygon feature. And then we just simply go next. Um, with any luck it will have remembered that we'd already connected to the national grid, British national grid, so it's already pre-selected the right coordinate system which we just accept. These tolerances we just accept the default and again we accept the default here. Um, and this is where we can start to um, actually add some attribute data um, to the attribute table that will be created along with the features that we start to draw on the map. Um, so for this exercise we're going to simply create two different columns inside that attribute table. The first one is going to be the name of the field, so I'm going to call it field name. And again, we, we're not allowed to use spaces here for these names, so we need to, we need to um, use an underscore. And then we need to choose the type of data that we're going to create. And we know we're going to just literally record the field name in here. So we're going to use we're going to choose text. Um, one thing that is worth mentioning here is the length. Again, 50 characters. This is the number of characters that are allowed within that particular column. And I'm going to make it slightly bigger just in case to 100. Um, and then the next thing is there is a classification code. So I'm going to just call it class code. And again, this is um, some text. Uh, I think we know that these are probably quite short, so we can again make it a much, much shorter length. So I'm going to put 10 characters as a maximum. Um, and once I've done that, I'm going to hit finish. So there we go. We've got our feature class created inside. And again, if we look at it and preview it, we know that there's actually no information been created inside this. So at the moment, it's completely empty. Um, so we can now flick back over to ArcMap. And if we pop over to the catalog, again we will notice that at the moment it's not actually showing up it's because we need to refresh the catalog. So we simply need to hit the right click and refresh. And there we go. So we've now got it showing up here. So again we can just add it as a layer. Um, and generally by default ArcMap will put vector layers above raster layers, um, so which is quite useful as well. Um, so we're going to be creating some field parcels around the Hadlow College area so I'm just going to quickly zoom into the 10,000 map to get roughly the right area. So there we go, we can see Hadlow College there and there's some of the fields that we're going to start to digitise. So the first thing we need to do before, before we start digitising is make sure that we can see this editor menu here. If you don't see the editor menu on your screen. The easiest way to find it is to simply right click in a grey area with no icons and then choose it from the list. So it can be either on or off. So once it's on, all we really need to do is go to this editor button here and we need to start editing. And at this point it's actually relatively simple because we've only got a couple of layers in our project but if we got more it would become a lot more complicated so simply start editing. Um, and at this point, these various tools become all of a sudden live. Um, 
And the first thing, if, if this hasn't happened automatically, which it may well happen in your computer, um, we need to click on this icon on the far right there, Create Feature Icon. And this gives us, again, a choice of options here. Um, and basically it's saying we've got two features, or we've got two sets of data loaded up, we've got the 10K and we've got the um, Phase 1 Habitat Survey Map. So we need to choose the one we're going to start creating data in. We know we want to create data inside this one. So we simply click it and then it becomes highlighted and down the bottom here we get a construction So we simply click it and then we notice down the bottom here we get these construction tools appear. Um, and for, for generally for creating these kind of features we're going to just accept the, the first construction tool which is a polygon tool. And as we move the cursor across onto the map we notice that it's now changed to a crosshair. Which now means we can literally start to digitise the field boundaries. So it's just a simple job of kind of clicking around the field like so and when we finish the last click we would do is a double click um, and you'll notice that when we finish that shape it is automatically giving you that little bright bluey outline which means that that has automatically been selected which makes it quite easy for us to then go and edit the attribute data so I'm just going to like switch on the attributes now as well for that particular shape and I can do it up here um, and you notice down the bottom here we've got the create feature and the attributes together and we can switch between the two here um, and there we go so it's given us our field name so we can we can write the name of the field I don't I'm just going to put the name of the field and then the potential code so NOC 1.1.1 so there all that information is now appended to that particular shape so if we want to create another field, we simply go back to the create feature, make sure we've got the, again, make sure we've got the right one selected, make sure we've got the polygon selected here, and again we notice that the crosshair has come up, so we can start to draw again. And as you can see, it's a relatively straightforward process. So again, to complete it, we double tap. And now if we want to get back to the attributes for that one, because it is, again, selected by default as it's the last shape we've just created we can simply go to the attributes and then we can start to fill them in again and then we can put the code in and again we can go back and then start the process all over again so once we've start once we've finished creating our our shapes our features um, we need to remember to save the edits so again we go back up to the editor menu here and we go save edits and if we want to completely end the editing session we can go stop editing and then we, we have no access here this, this, this box has become greyed out because we're not in an editing session anymore but if we want to look at the attribute data behind what we've just created, we can either again right click on the table over here and open the attributes. So there we go, there's the, there's the names of the fields um, and there's the code that we've also entered. And you'll notice that also automatically being created, we have the areas of each of those parcels of land we've just created and also we have the length of, of the shape as well. And that's been created because we've formed this inside a geodatabase. So that's, that's the sort of basic creation and editing of shape files. A couple of other things. Um, we, can, we can go in and delete and we can edit these as well, should we make a mistake. Um, but we need to be in an editing session to do that. So we need to go back into an editing session. So we need to start editing again. So again, we need to make sure we're editing the right layer. So again, we need to double check that we're doing that. So there we go, we're editing now the phase one um, survey layer. Um, and a couple of things, we've got a whole range of different tools up here which can help us, um, which we're going to go through in a bit more detail at a later date. Probably the most obvious one from your point of view at this point is the editor tool here. So we click on that, we can simply click on a layer and we can double click on it um, and then we get these little kind of points come up which means we can then hover over them and we can make the shape 
we can change the shape of the layer. And in fact, if we move to somewhere away from the point, we can also add, again, by clicking control click, we can add a vertices, which again gives us another little control handle, which we can then drag around to change the shape of a file. So once we've done that, once we've we've edited and changed our shape, the best thing to do is to go back up to the this tool up here, the arrow tool. And we notice that that shape is now selected because it's the last shape we were editing, um, which again is quite useful if you wanted to go back and edit the attributes. Again, you still could go and edit the attributes at this point, so you could go in and change things. So if you've made a mistake, um, or if you completely messed up and that was in the wrong place, the wrong location, we could also just hit the delete key. Um, and remove that shape altogether. Um, another way to delete that particular shape is to go over here to the layer and right click into the attributes and you'll notice there immediately at the top um, because that shape is selected here on the map we can see that it's also selected inside the table um, and we can simply just go in there and delete selected and then it will be removed from the map. So, I mean, those are some of the sort of basic creation and editing options and choices you have when creating these feature classes from within a geo database. The most important thing to do is remember to always f finish by saving your edits at the end. So I'm just going to, and again, if you click stop editing, it will ask you, do you want to save your edits? And I would always say yes. So that's, that's, that's the basic editing and creation of feature classes in a geo database.